Welcome everyone. This video is going to show you some of the features of the new InControl page set for MindExpress. InControl has been specifically designed to allow full Windows control using iGaze. Here on the screen there is an empty portal. To install InControl, choose Menu, Import and then Online Page Sets. Here you can see InControl already shown at the top of the list and you can select it. If you cannot see InControl listed, you can search for it in the search box. Now to import it, just press the Import button to bring it into your MindExpress portal. You can now launch InControl by clicking on it. Now when you launch InControl, you will see right away that there is a control bar on the right hand side of the screen containing various buttons and icons and I will be going over them in a minute but when I talk about controlling our Windows environment it's important to know that there are actually three things that we do almost constantly they are clicking, scrolling and typing so I am going to talk about the clicking options of in control first here I am selecting the double click option. After I have selected it, you can see that the colour of the cell has changed. I will then use that to launch Spotify and you will see that once I have used the double click, the double click cell is no longer highlighted. This is designed to behave this way. It is different to the click plus option. You will see that when selected the colour is different and when I click using my eyes, I can keep on clicking. The cell is no longer toggling off. To turn it off, I just look at it again. Now suppose that you want to double click an item and do it several times. By looking at the double click cell once, it will go a light blue, and if I look at it a second time, it will go a dark blue to be toggled on. To turn it off, just look at it a third time. So now I'm going to open a PDF file to show the scrolling feature of InControl. So first of all, you need to activate the scroll function by selecting it. Then I need to look at an area of the screen to set an anchor point of where you want to scroll, as it's possible that the application you are controlling may have more than one scroll bar. Once you have set the anchor point, you will see two scroll arrows and a small red cross on the other side of the screen. Now, if I look anywhere in the area between the two scroll arrows, nothing will happen. As soon as I look down, it will start scrolling down. And if I look up, it will start scrolling up. The more you look down, the faster the scroll will occur. But again, if I look at the safe zone between the two arrows, nothing will happen. This makes for a natural way of scrolling with our eyes on documents and web pages. Once you have finished scrolling, you can look at the red cross to close the scrolling option. The keyboard is a straightforward QWERTY layout with word prediction cells along the top. If you wish to get back to the mouse control, then just select the mouse icon. If you need extra characters, then you can select the number cell. If you require further characters, then just choose the three dots. Notice that this keyboard has plenty of blank cells so that you can add your own characters if necessary. Now I am going back to the mouse controls to show you some more features and functions within InControl. Firstly, I am going to talk about the dock window. Here I am bringing up the notepad application and you will see that it is quite small. So, if you use the dock window icon, it will maximise the screen space for the active application. This will make the active application as big as possible without obscuring the in-control bar on the right hand side of my screen. If the bar is obscuring something, then I can always move it to the other side of my screen using the move button. I can also minimise it to enable maximum screen space for my active application. There is a small plus sign at the bottom that allows me to access even more functions. Now you have seen that if I select the click plus option, you will see a searchlight window on my screen. And if I stay still, it will zoom in. 
Sometimes you may want a real precision zoom. What the precision zoom function does is to zoom in for a longer time, allowing for more accuracy on smaller targets. If I select quick zoom, it will zoom in faster and will also zoom in less. So depending on the situation, you can change the setting for your zoom speed by selecting either quick zoom or precision zoom. Now let's look at the setting options within in control. If I select settings, I get a page that has large enough targets to select with your eyes. The first thing to note is that the eye gaze monitor is shown tracking the eyes along with a distance guide. You can initiate a calibration if necessary, as well as pause the eye tracking. The size of the minimize button can also be changed. Now, if you go to the mouse settings tab, you can see more options including the ability to change your mouse control bar. If I set this to small and then select the OK button, you will see that the mouse control window is smaller. But for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the large setting. Also in the mouse settings tab, you will see that you can modify the dwell cursor behaviors by setting different dwell and zoom speeds and magnification. What is interesting in InControl is that the fact that you can personalize your function bar. To do that, choose the mouse layout cell. Here you will see all the options that I have been showing you listed here. Now the great thing is that I can, for example, choose an empty cell, select change, and I can add a new action. Suppose I want to add a copy action. I choose it and then select OK and the copy action is there. I can also add further actions such as paste. If my new actions are not in the right place in my control bar, I can select it and move it around. If I no longer require an action, I can select it and choose Remove to delete it. So this allows you to fully personalize and modify your function bar. There is also a layout extra one and layout extra two. This has, if I select it, has more or less the same functions as the normal function bar. However, these two extra allow you to have two extra function bars that you can use to control specific Windows applications. For example, if you look at the extra one layout, here you will see extra functions such as play and pause, full screen, minimize, and also volume controls. So this could be used, for example, with media applications such as Disney Plus or Spotify. The way to access these extra function bars is to simply access them in your function bar. So if I select extra one, you will see that the color of the bar changes and I now have my extra functions that I have just showed you. To get back to your normal function bar, select the back to mouse function cell. Here you will see another useful function called start app, where you can launch different Windows applications. So for example, I can launch Disney Plus and you will see that it will automatically jump to my extra one bar by design giving you your media control functions. Now if I go back to start app page you will see that there is an edit button and there is plenty of space for you to be able to add your own applications or change the order or delete existing entries. So that concludes the introduction to InControl and I hope that it gives you an idea of what a powerful tool it can be. Thank you.